This is Twit. I see, because I go to these industrial user group conferences, I actually see people using the HoloLens, right. get demos of that, and right. I've changed out weird chats and like swapped out things using HoloLens demos where they're like, and, and it's very effective, and it is super cool, and I can see why Microsoft is investing here, and there is demand for that sort of thing, Absolutely. especially on the industrial Industry. side. Yeah, and Google, we know Google Glass still sells in industrial applications. It's a little lot. It's not a heads-up display as much as like a a monitor over your eye brow. Yeah, I remember going to Mobile World Congress. Uh, it was the only time I went. I think it was 2016, and there was a big company. I think it was Fujitsu that showed off just having some type of little Google yep. Glass looking device on, and you, you're basically a, a line worker at a at a factory. And you're able to do your inventory and inspect the parts and things like that just from looking at it. And I thought it was pretty outstanding tech and could be used everywhere with these big manufacturing companies. But I don't know who's all buying into it. And now it seems like that would be perfect for hollow and stuff. That's what they use it for. So like Emerson, um, who else is like Emerson? Honeywell. Um, trying to think. Has not Xerox. Uh, Tetra Pak, actually, you know, the people who make the aseptic milk containers, mm -hmm. uh, Tetra Pak actually uses HoloLens in their factories, um, cool. for it. A lot of times it's used for training or repair of machines. So understanding what's happening inside a machine, it's all part of like Microsoft's digital twin product. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, where they've got a replica of a really big, expensive machine and all the sensor data comes into that. Yeah, that's what they showed uh, people repairing, learning how to repair. They showed surgeons learning how to do heart surgery in the operating room, just reviewing the procedure and then doing it. Uh, I think there's a lot of, I mean, there's huge amount of use for this. But I'll tell you where I feel like we are. We're in the, in the maybe the 90s or even the 80s, when we saw a lot of technologies like the Newton in the Palm and internet technologies and other converging. And it took 10 years, but by 2007, they converged onto the iPhone and BlackBerry and all, and, and, right. and they converged. And, if, and now, I mean, that 10 years later, it, it's completely changed computing, how we use computing, how we think of computing. It's a huge shift. I think we're at that those early stages where you're starting to see it, the convergence of new technologies coming in when you have voice activated technologies that's going to be critical for user interface because user interface on mm -hmm. any of these is very difficult you see voice activated coming in you see screens uh in a heads-up display or a variety of places experimentation with where a screen would be because you do need a readout of some kind my money's on a heads-up display and you do see a lot of those um you see artificial intelligence too and that's i think going to be very important because any any wearable has to know a lot about in the environment, just like a self-driving car has to know where it's going. The wearable, and I think all the demos right now are in very constrained environments, just as all the speech demos are very in constrained vocabularies. But once once you evolve these things, imagine having the same kind of heads-up display you have now in a factory floor in in the in the arbitrary real world. And that's where AI and things like time of flight sensors, which those are the 3D sensors that uh, are on the HoloLens and are very similar to the LiDAR used on uh, automobiles, self-driving cars. I think all of that is starting to come together. It's got to get miniaturized. It's got to get more effective. But I ultimately see the future of computing, and maybe it's 10, maybe it's 20 years out, as something like that, at something that maybe they're not going to look like, they, they don't have to look like, you know, stylish glasses, spectacles, they can look a little clunky, not super, not like HoloLens clunky, but they can be a little clunkier because we'll get used to it. But I see people wearing those and using that as their primary computing platform and using speech, uh, AI, uh, cameras, heads up displays that can turn into screens. If that's I'm going to argue with you a little bit. Okay. I think you're close. I think what is actually like, I, I think the computing, there will be computing on your body, some sort of computer that is a smartphone, or maybe we get to the point where it could be a headset. We're not there for a while. Yeah. But I think what happens with displays is actually 
anything around you will be a display will get a standard that has it interact with you so you can pull up your display in front of you on any screen. So many surfaces will become screens, either projected, that's right. interface with them. That's right. And by your proximity, you'll make it yours. Right. I completely so that, agree. That's, that's my hunch. Because I don't, I think the HoloLens and those kind of heads-up displays are good in industrial. They're very expensive. You do need a lot of computing power to, to do that. And they solve a really real problem, but it's not a real problem that we all have every day, I don't think, today. So. Well, okay. I, I, it's not that it's solving a problem. It's the it's ubiquitous computing, right? We, we're moving in that direction. Yes, that's why I was talking about that whole paradigm shift. Yeah, yeah. that's u ubiquitous computing. I, to me, though, th there is a data point with these foldable screens, which is we do want better screens wherever we are. I think you're right that maybe that whatever screen is near you is the one that you use. And if screens are everywhere, then it won't matter if you carry one with you. But you will carry a personal computing device of some kind that knows your preference. Maybe not. Maybe it, maybe it'll be that'll be a mesh that's everywhere. And when I no. get no. No, because no. privacy, right? You want to keep it to yourself. Privacy, yeah. lack of standards. Yeah. That we're not going to get there. Lack of standards would be a real hardship, because you, and that might even be the hardship with the screen thing. That is the hardship with yeah. the screens. Yeah, but well, I. That but, is one of the hardships. But with the we know computing's moving to the edges. We know ubiquitous computing is power, is the trend, and I think looking at new interfaces is really what's going on right now, and mm -hmm. I think uh, I think a wearable glasses makes a lot of sense. Uh, earpieces. Certainly, it's the stuff of science fiction. You see this in science fiction all the time. Just as you saw the iPad in 2001, not the year, the movie. <laughs> the movie, the year was 1977 or something yeah. like that. Yeah.